For our multi-coil setup, we're going to be using MSD's Pro 600. It's an eight-channel capacitive discharge ignition with over 600 plus millijoules of spark energy and over 300 microseconds of duration. What that means is that we're not going to have any problem keeping the cylinders lit in our Fox body. I mounted the coils on the firewall and installed the MSD Pro 600 in the passenger side footwell. It should give us plenty of harness for our driver's side and passenger side coils. MSD's Pro 600 harness comes with two 7-pin connectors that are going to plug into our coil near plug harness that we added. Now you want to make sure that cylinder 1 from the main harness goes to input A on the Pro 600 side, which corresponds to coil A. Cylinder 2 goes to input B, cylinder 3 goes to input C, and so on. Once you feed the two 7-pin connectors through the firewall, go ahead and plug them into the coil near plug harness. Plug the driver's side into the ignition 5678 connector and the passenger side into the ignition 1234 connector. There's also a loose green wire. This is the power boost wire. When this wire is grounded, the ignition output jumps to 600 millijoules. With an HP or Dominator EFI system, you can connect the Pro 600 to the CAN bus connector and control the power output via the software. By default, the Pro 600 delivers 325 millijoules of spark energy, almost the equivalent of an MSD 8 series ignition. That's a very hot spark. We're going to save the power boost wire for drag strip passes. Let's move on to the coil harness. The Pro 600 comes with all the pins and connectors for the ignition coils. If you're using MSD's 8232 ignition coils, you have the option of using the included pigtail. These pigtails have a ground wire, which I'm going to lengthen and connect to the cylinder heads. Here are all the connectors spliced into the harness. I used Mr. Gasket's thermo sleeving on the coil harness to protect against heat and abrasion. I used split loom and shrink tubing to finish off all the connector leads. Here's our finished harness with grounding wires ready to install. Now we can fish our coil harness through the firewall. Make sure to connect each connector to the corresponding coil. It's worth stating again that coil A goes to cylinder 1, coil B goes to cylinder 2, coil C goes to cylinder 3, and so on. The coil wires are stamped and labels are supplied. You don't want to mix this part up. Once again, I'm using Earl's firewall grommet on the driver's side to seal off the engine compartment. We'll connect to the same head ground leads as our main harness for our coil grounds. Now we can plug in both connectors to our Pro 600. To handle the massive spark output from our Pro 600, we're going to be using MSD superconductor wires. We got their universal set, which is going to allow us to custom fit each wire. Out of the box, MSD provides a mini stripper crimper, which is going to give you a factory style crimp. If you do a lot of wire sets a year, I recommend you getting the Pro Crimp tool. It makes the job that much easier. First start by connecting all wires to the spark plugs using the longest wires up front and working your way back with the shorter ones. Route them to the designated coil and then mark them. Before removing them, use the included cylinder markers to keep them organized. Using the Pro Crimpers make short work of building a wire set. Use silicone spray or dielectric grease to slide the boots into place. Finish installing the wires making sure they are routed away from the headers and going to the appropriate coil. When you're doing a multi-coil setup on a Ford, you're going to need a cam and crank signal. Now you can do that with either one of Holly or MSD's dual sync distributors, or in our case, we've already got an MSD crank trigger. We're going to replace the magnetic pickup with a Hall effect sensor, and we're going to use one of MSD's cam sync distributors. Along with this harness, our MSD Pro 600 is going to have everything it needs to fire the holes. MSD's cam sync distributor drops right in. Make sure to liberally coat the distributor gear with the included molly lube. If your cam sink doesn't drop in, you might have to turn the crank over for it to slip in. Our Hall Effect pickup will replace our magnetic pickup. Our crank trigger and cam sink harness plugs into our ignition connector on the main harness. Now we can connect our cam sink and crank trigger to our ignition harness. It's finally coming together. Let's configure our crank trigger and our cam sensor. To dial in our crank trigger with the Hall Effect sensor, we need to position our balancer at our ignition reference angle of 60 degrees before top dead center, and then align a magnet to the sensor. If it's not possible to line up a magnet with the Hall Effect sensor, you might have to take your crank trigger wheel off and re-clock it until you can line up a magnet with the sensor. 
To make sure we're on the compression stroke, I placed my finger on the spark plug hole of our number one cylinder and turned the crank by hand. Once you feel air push your finger off the spark plug hole, you know you're on the compression stroke. Back the motor up to the 60 degree mark. Now we need to make sure we can align the Hall effect sensor with a magnet on the wheel. We slid our bracket in the mount and tightened the bolts on the bracket. Next, we made sure we had 40 thousandths clearance between the pickup and the wheel. Now we can tighten the lock nut on the sensor. It's a good idea to rotate the crank trigger wheel to make sure there's no run out, eliminating any potential sensor damage. We'll need power to dial in the cam sync, so make sure your Terminator X power leads and battery terminals are connected. To align cam sync, we need to rotate our balancer 135 degrees before the crank trigger pulse. This is so our Terminator X can identify cylinder one. Our cam sync rotates one time for every two crankshaft rotations, telling our Terminator X that the number one cylinder is coming up. Here's the formula we use to help us position the cam sync. Since our ignition reference angle is 60 degrees before top dead center, we'll back up our balancer to the 195 degree mark. That's where we'll set our cam sync. With the balancer at 195 degrees before top dead center, key on the power to turn on our ignition. MSD's cam sync plug is a breeze to set up with the built-in LED. When the magnet is in front of the sensor, the LED is off, making it easy to dial in. To set the cam sync, rotate the housing until the LED turns off. Now rotate the cam sync housing counterclockwise in the direction of the distributor rotation. When the LED turns on, stop and rotate the housing clockwise, just until the LED turns off. This placement sets up the cam sync as digital rising, which we'll configure in the Terminator X software. Finish by tightening the plug hole down. We're finally ready to run the wizard on the handheld display. We need to get a base calibration so we can modify this file on the Terminator X software so we can configure our ignition. The final connection we'll make is for our handheld display. Plug it into the CAN connector right near the end of the main harness. Turn on the key to fire up Terminator X for the first time. The first thing we're going to do is run the wizard to create a global configuration file. We're going to select multi-port fuel injection. Scroll down to select our Fox Body Mustang. Eight cylinders. For the firing order, we'll select the second option for our 351 Windsor. We're gonna stick with cubic inches. Our engine is actually a Stroker 351 displacing 383 cubic inches. Our target idle speed. We're gonna shoot for 800 for now. Save, gonna hit next. For camp specs, we'll select option number two so we can have closed loop operation down to idle. Option 3 disables closed loop operation under 2500 RPM. This allows cars with open headers or radical camshafts to idle well using only the base fuel map. For ignition type, we'll select dual sync, but we'll use the Terminator X software to configure our ignition since we have a cam sync and a crank trigger. These options are not available on the handheld wizard. For fuel pressure, we'll stick with 43 PSI since that's what our injectors are rated at. We're using Snake Eater Performance 1000 CC injectors. Supercharger, go next. Select our map sensor, which is the 554-134. For a baseline, we'll set wide open throttle ignition timing at 32 degrees. We'll take one degree per pound of boost out. If you notice carefully, you can see how much that will be at zero, seven, 14, and 21 pounds of boost. For our wide open throttle target AFR, we're going to input a conservative 12.4. For our AFR offset, we're going to select 0.4. And just like the boost retard, you can see what it looks like at 7, 14, and 21 PSI. We now have our global file configured. Hit start to upload and save our file. Hit OK and then finish. Now let's cycle off the ignition. We can now take this file that the wizard created and use the Terminator X software to manually configure our cam, crank, and coil near plug signals. You don't have to do this step if you used one of the supported ignition types in the wizard or you're using a traditional ignition system. The wizard does not support the coil near plug conversion. If our engine was originally coil near plug, the wizard would support it. Luckily, our Terminator X software will allow us to configure these manually. Let me show you how. Insert the SD card onto your laptop and fire up the Terminator X software. Click on Open Global File and then locate your SD card, usually a drive letter. Ours is E. 
click on it, then click on the Holly folder, then click on the FW0100 folder, then finally on the saved GCF folder. Our global file should be visible as a .terx file. Go ahead and select it and click open. Click on system, which is the Holly EFI icon on the menu, and then click on ignition parameters. Click on ignition type. Scroll down to custom, then hit configure. For crank sensor, we're gonna select one pulse per fire for our crank trigger, and sensor type, we're gonna to change to digital falling. This is also where we set our ignition reference angle, which is at 60 degrees where we set our crank trigger at. For cam sensor type, we'll select single pulse, and for sensor type, we set it up as digital rising. If you're using a Dominator or HP EFI system with a Holly EFI version 5, there will be a drop down specific for the MSD Pro 600 and a power table that you can adjust at the left here. Both the crank and cam sensor types can be changed to either digital rising or falling. It just depends on how you positioned your cam sync. For our MSD Pro 600, make sure the output setup is set as DIS coil on plug and we're also upping the dwell time to 2 milliseconds. Let's go ahead and save our file and close it. Now we can insert our SD card back into our handheld display. We'll cycle the ignition and now all that's left is to reload our calibration. From the home screen, click on File, Global Configs, select your calibration, click on Upload to ECU. Hit OK and we're done. We'll cycle the key and the last thing we'll do is a TPS auto set. From the home screen, click on Wizards and then click on TPS auto set. You'll be prompted to step on the throttle two times. Make sure the engine is not running but the ignition key is on. To auto set the TPS, slowly press the pedal to the floor then slowly release it back. Do this two times. If you did it right, you'll get confirmation that it was successful. With our updated global file, we're ready for our first start. <laughs> Alright, tune in next time when we dial in the timing and set up our idle. We'll also set up our inputs and outputs on Terminator X software. Learn more about Terminator X for Fords at holly.com.